Hey, hey, everybody. How are we doing today? Um, hope everybody is enjoying their terms of isolation right now. And if you're watching this now, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And if you're watching this in the future, you'll know what we were referring to when we had this call today. i uh, joined today by Miss Melissa. Is it Viox or Vox? How do you pronounce it internally? Viox. Viox. Very cool. Very cool. Where is the last name from? I'm curious. That's it's unique. French. Very cool. See, if I would have spent more time in in France, and I would probably understand that, but a uh, very cool name, and thanks for joining me today. Um, I've been wanting, and, and tell us a little bit about uh, where you're located. You're in uh, North Dakota, correct? Yes, I'm in um, Williston, North Dakota. My town is about 30,000 people. Um, it's very rural, very cold, um, and we are 100% oil and gas industry. Very cool, and I see in the background there, you're with EXP. Yes. Very cool, very cool company. And um, so today our goal, Melissa's kind of new to the COD program. I'll kind of paint this picture a little bit. Um, she has been working with Brett uh, and uh, over the past few months or years, I'm not even sure how long, but she has been getting uh, Facebook ads uh, running and has been getting Facebook leads. Uh, and tell me if I'm wrong on any of this. You've been doing on average about one transaction a month. Uh, the goal is to get to a little bit more consistency with about three transactions a month. Yes. And um, the reason that we decided to do this call is because you kind of in your uh, initial video has said your biggest pain point was being able to get uh, and feel comfortable with prospecting. Uh, and making it more of a normal process and not like you're probably feel like a telemarketer or, you know, whatever else. Uh, but how do we, now that we have the leads, how do we really have conversation with them, even in the time right now, which is obviously some sort of a recession, obviously right this very second that's going on, uh, still be human, uh, but still get, you know, and help people that necessarily want to buy or sell or start the process uh, in your in your market. Is that a fair statement? Yes, yes, it is so, correct. So let's first dive into a little bit of what you're currently doing. So, and I'm, I'm a role player, so that's the easiest way for me to kind of understand really what's being said. Um, the one thing we're going to be focusing on is really changing the words that come out of your mouth to expect a different result, right? So tell me like right now, so I'm a Facebook ad lead and you're calling me and we've already introduced yourself. We've already done all that. Where are you trying to take me from that point forward? What generally is the type of uh, question that you're asking from that point forward? And you're welcome just to roll that with me as well if you like. Um, so I, for the introduction, I kind of use uh, Brett's script and kind of try to build a little bit of rapport that way. Um, and then right now, since we're going through kind of strange times, I'm trying to break the ice and just ask how everybody's doing and all of this craziness. Um, and if there's anything that they need. And then a lot of people actually in my area after that will kind of start talking to me about real estate. Um, and then I just take it from there or I try to find a house that they've been on my website looking at. And just I ask them if they have questions on that particular house or if they wanted to set up a showing. Um, or, and I just kind of present it. I just say, hey, um, this isn't a sales call. Just wanted to do a quick customer service check-in, see if you had any questions or wanted to get a showing set up on any properties. And then I kind of just take it from there. Um, right. Sometimes I'll ask them like, you know, I'll ask, try to ask them open-ended questions like how long have you been looking? Um, what's your experience been like and, and stuff like that. Right. And so once you're having this call with them, Every call or every email or every voicemail or every text generally has some sort of a call to action. So right. in this case, what really are you trying to get the, the prospect to do, the lead to do with you? Um, to get them, well, I have been using an appointment setting script that I have for a buyer consultation. Um, but sometimes they're too far out. And if I can tell that they're uncomfortable or they're, you know, um, six months out or something like that, then I just try to get the permission to follow back up with them and, and um, keep them updated kind of on what's going on, on the, in the real estate market. So your goal is really what? What what in the perfect world are you trying to get them to do? Um, Get to a buyer consultation. Which is basically some sort of an appointment? 
Right. Right. Now, again, we're going to speak once we're not all on lockdown because this won't last forever. Right. Ultimately, right today, as of this recording, uh, we would be speaking and wanting to talk to them virtually about this buyer console. Right. But ultimately, we're going to kind of – this call is more about what do I really want out of that prospect when we're able to actually meet people face-to-face. Because I, I, I hate to say it, but we are going to be able to meet people face-to-face again. <laughs> right. Right. In the yeah. It's not going to be like this forever. Uh, um, even though it is kind of interesting how this is working out. So, um, so let's talk about that though. So let me ask you the statistics that you currently know about Facebook leads. What generally, how long generally from the time that you get them as a lead, what is the average amount of time before most of them are really ready to start the process? It's uh, six months, six to 12 months. Sometimes okay. longer. Could be, right? Could be now. I mean, it, it just depends on each individual prospect. Right? Yeah. Everybody has a unique story. They could have already given their information 10 times and you're getting it today and they're really ready to start the process today. But like right. the, yeah. the average of sorts is still pretty far down the road. Okay. Right. We kind of use an average of just kind of a mentality of 90, but we don't want to assume that because they may be. Somebody looking to buy or sell or start the process today, maybe. Right. So this is where a very common issue in our industry because we've been trained that we necessarily want to go for an appointment. Our goal in these phone calls is to get an appointment. From this point forward, I want you to forget that forever. Okay? On these calls, we don't know yet if we want an appointment. Right. Okay, so let me ask you, this is a personal question. You're a human, just like the people that you want to work with. You want to work with people similar to yourself. So if I and I was calling you and I was asking you or telling you this script, I was building rapport with you, asking them, being I was being a human, being super nice, but I'm using this call script to get an appointment. If you're waiting six months from starting the process. How is that going to you feel? If I'm over here trying to get you to set an appointment with me and meet with me, but you're really ready to start the process for another six months, mm-hmm. how would that make you feel? Um, it would probably be kind of annoying. But that was never your intent as an agent. Right. Okay. That's where I think the industry has really gotten away from paying attention to the client. Right. What really are we portraying to the client? So the little tool I want you to do is but when you're calling, we're not calling to set an appointment. Don't put that pressure on yourself. We're not calling to be able to come up with a new best friend either, right? We're not calling just a small talk. We're there for business, but we don't want them to know that we're there for business. That's, there's a fine line in between that. So I'm not trying to tell you to build a relationship for 90 days and hope you get their business when they're ready. That's, that's very passive. That doesn't work either. So in this case, there are two things that we want to know about every single prospect, okay? And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share a little bit, and you probably um, should be able to see this, okay? So you may or may not have downloaded this yet from um, the uh, Training Academy. But when we get down into here, we're going to look at this piece right here, the qualifying there we go. Let's see if I can make this better. The qualifying of a prospect. Okay. So in the, there we go. I'll just leave it like this. So in this case, what we're really trying to work on is this piece right here, the qualifying of a prospect. So I would say that when, when you're trying to qualify a prospect, you, you, the, the biggest thing that you're trying to find out is what their time frame really is. Real estate is a very unique industry in the fact that not everybody is looking to start the process today, even if they found the perfect house for the perfect price. Right? I always jokingly say, if the kids are in school, mom says the kids aren't, we're not moving until the kids are out of school because we're keeping them in the same school or whatever. I don't care how great the property is and how great the price is, they're generally not going to move until or start the process until after school's out. Right? So it's a very unique industry. So in this case, what we really want to understand is this piece right here. 
motivation time frame, motivation, motivation. Does that mean anything to you at all? <laughs> Just in it in and of itself? Well, yeah, because um, if we if we know what their motivation is, we can we know how we can help them. And and the, kind of the same with the time frame. If we know their time frame, we know we know how to better help them. Yep. Yeah. Or know what help they need right now. Right. See, the, the, the traditional way is make the phone calls, bust the calls two hours a day, hustle, hustle, hustle. Let's let's get on some appointments. And they're like, basically, oh, crap. Why are only 50 percent of my appointments actually showing up? Because the, 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 the call to action is just to get an appointment set when in reality, that's not really what we want to do now. We have a couple of rules in CLD. I'll go over here in a second with you, but let's talk about the motivation and time frame piece. Right now, though, you get on the phone with a prospect of a Facebook lead right now. When that person doesn't book an appointment with you, how do you categorize those people currently? Um, currently, I um, set a task for to follow back up with them. Um, it depends on their time frame. Okay. So, and then I cut their time frame in half and then follow back up. Which is a very good point. And, and go ahead and share why you, why you cut the time frame in half. Um, because a lot of people, you know, that's just when they're going to actually be ready to move. Right. Is, or or get the process started or need more information or something like that. Right. So, and actually, it's going to cover that as well. So let's let's go through this really quick. So right now, we're we're just setting up follow up calls, mm -hmm. right? So let's, let's let's dive into that a little bit more, so that way we get very specific on who needs what and and how that works. So the first piece of it is understand their time frame. So here's the question I'd like for you to write down for motivation. Now you're being human. You're talking with them. You're making sure they're okay. You're having small talk and building rapport. That's fantastic. You're at an open house. You're small talking about how cool the kitchen is. You're uh, at an event. You're wherever. We wanted to slide these two questions in, okay, in amongst everything else that's going on around us. You're talking at an event. Somebody's thinking about um, uh, buying or selling or something, and you're just kind of just giving them advice, et cetera. You want to slide these questions in there. So that way you really know what you want out of them moving forward. Motivation, okay. I always say, I understand. What's the reason you're considering making this move? Hey, just out of curiosity, what's what's the reason you guys are considering making a move? Okay, it starts the process of motivation, right? They'll say, well. Job relocation, family's growing, family's downsizing. There may not be a motivating factor. I just hate my neighbor. They're getting on my nerves, which usually doesn't mean they're going to move. Right. Uh, right. So this starts start painting a little bit of a picture about truly how this individual is because their motivation will help you understand how big the push is. Right. Okay. So then we may have more small talk or we may go straight into, which I prefer going straight into, time frame. And the question that you may want to write down there, and again, this is all in COD as well, but is in a perfect world. When would you like to be moving into your new home? In a perfect world, when would you like for me to hand you the check from the title company? Okay, you made mention before you always divide everything in half. I want to get more precise than just that formula. Because by asking a time frame question, we want to ask of a very specific stage of the process. In a perfect world, when would you like to be moving in, not starting the process? When would you like to be moving in to your new home? You know, on the on the seller side, it could be. Well, when would you like for me to be put in the for sale sign in the front yard? Or it could be, when would you like for me to be handing you the check from the close of your sale at the title company? Okay, we want to use those very specific pieces of the business or of the process 
So that way your, your math gets a little bit more precise for your time. Right. Yeah. Okay. What do you, what's your feedback about that so far? Oh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, sometimes I do use that question, um, the, in the perfect world question. And sometimes it will act, actually like make people kind of laugh, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yesterday. I'm sorry. Cause they'll say like yesterday or tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. So I do what like that, that question. But what does that tell you? Their motivation. Yeah. Their desire. Right. Is really there. Like if I can get pre-approved, maybe if I can find the right house, if I can get it for the right house of right price. Right. So we, we, we take out all those variables because we just want to know their intent, their desire, you know, and do they have a big enough push of a reason that it probably is going to happen at some stage and win. Right. Okay. So as you'll see, you'll see two more motivating motivations afterwards. If you're talking to a seller, a lot of the times the seller will say, um, I would, um, the reason is because I just want to get the most amount of money for my property. We know that's not really the true motivating factor. We need to drill down deeper. Right. So, hey, absolutely. I can definitely understand why you'd want to get the most out of your, uh, out of the money out of your property. What do you plan on doing with the money? Mm -hmm. Right. And maybe there's something else because we want to keep going down that path to kind of figure out. So the motivation, motivation piece is for you to drill down to really understand the core reason. Um, they may say something about their family growing. Great. In a perfect world, when would you like to be moving into this new home? Tell me more about what, when are we do? We got triplets. Like what's going on? You know, like we're drilling down to really understand the meat and potatoes per, per se of really what the motivation is. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Don't don't take the fluff. You're gonna have to drill a little bit on that. There's a reason when we talk about um, controlling the prospect throughout the sale is because everything that we do, we verbalize that based upon helping them accomplish that particular motivating piece. That you know. So the reason I think that we should do this in this time frame uh, for this offer is because the triplets are due on this date, and this is how the like we're relating everything back to that. You know, or if I'm trying to get an appointment with them, I'm relating back to, hey, you know, so I, I know you guys are probably getting nervous. The triplets are going to be here in three months. So are you guys available this weekend? Right. Um, Everything I do is relating back to their true motivating factor. Okay. Yeah. So any questions yet or any other thing you want to make mention about this particular piece? No, I don't think so. Nothing you think of so far? Um, yeah, I think, well, I know that, um, like drilling down on their motivation is a piece that I've been missing. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Sure. Because <laughs> we as agents, they'll say, oh, because I want to get the most from my house. We're thinking, okay, they're ready to go. Right. The market's really good. Right? We start feeding in. And honestly, that's just, we kind of do it to ourselves a lot of the time. We kind of set ourselves up for failure, unfortunately. Yeah, we do. And it's easy to get excited. I think when somebody's like, you know, I just want to get the most amount of money for my house. And you're like, oh yeah, we can do that right now. You know, it's a seller's market or you get excited and then you. And you think it's going to happen now, but in reality, they're not really ready yet. Yeah. All right, cool. So. All right, so let's go on with this piece here. So the, the next piece is to understand, now that we know the motivation and time frame, okay, in normal conversation, is that what we said earlier, we want to segment everybody based upon their time frame, okay? And you are right in saying that when they say six months, a lot of times it's three months. Let's get a little bit more precise with that. So once we know their time frame, give me an average time frame that you think most of your clients would be or your prospects. An average time frame? Mm -hmm. um, probably at least 90 days out. Some people are ready to start looking right away, but the majority of people are at least 90 days. Okay. So let's do this really quick. Let's write this down. 
Miss Ryder, A, B, C is down. We're back in school. Mm -hmm. So A is someone looking to buy or sell or start the process in the next 30 days. And A is someone looking to buy or sell or start the process in the next 30 days. They don't have to be pre-approved. They don't have to have their home sold. The desire is there if they can find the right property even. Right? We're taking the contingencies away. We're just focused on the desire. If they can get pre-approved, if they can whatever, if they get the job offer, they are looking to buy or sell or start the process in the next 30 days. Okay? It's a very important bucket. A B is somebody 30 to 90 days out from starting the process. It's kind of vague, 30 to 90 days. It's like they're not quite ready for an appointment, but they're just kind of almost ready. They're still about 30 to 90 days from starting the process. We don't segment them from 30 to 60, 60 to 90, you know, whatever, right? Just 30 to 90 days. And the Bs are what we reference as our bench. Okay, those are the people. I mean, I'll get into that in a little bit, but our, the B's are really the most important piece in our business because that's the consistency. If we have a lack of B's, 30, a, a, a people who qualify that are 30, 90 days from starting the process, if we have a lack of them, it's going to cause that curve in our production. So we'll get into that in a minute. And C's are 90 days. Later. They're out there. Maybe a year. I don't know. That's fine. Okay. So you oh, said most of your people though will be a B. Mm -hmm. Or could be a B or a C. So can you read this piece right here? What it says? I don't know why it's um challenge time frame. There you go. Put name on board. Okay. So challenge the time frame. What does that mean to you? Um the digging deeper part on their motivation, maybe to see if that's their actual time frame. Just like you said earlier, you say, they say six months, you say you put them down and think of them as three months. Right. Mm -hmm. So let me give you a, a question that you can ask them that will help you even get that time frame even tighter, especially with the ones that are telling you that they're out more than 30 days from starting the process. This is where we don't want to, like you're saying, we don't want to mistakenly think somebody's six months because that's what they told us when they really should have been three months. Because mm -hmm. that is that's a real problem. I mean, that's a real issue in our industry. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a question that can help you even tighten down that time frame even even tighter. So hey, Melissa, yeah, absolutely. In six months, I, I'm sure the market's still gonna be great there as well. But just out of curiosity, if I were to find the right house. For the right price in the right area in the next two to three months, should I call you or not bother you? So, Melissa, I understand that you're looking to start this process in the next six months, and that's awesome. Definitely will be there to help you. And in between now and then, I definitely want to provide a lot of value to make this as seamless and easily as possible for you. But if I did happen to run across the right house for the right price, remember this is the perfect world, right? The right house for the right price in the right area in the next two to three months, I just cut it down a little bit, right? In the next couple of months, should I, should I share them with you or just not bother you with them? Based upon what they say coming back to me, I might drill down a little bit more on that time frame, but ultimately this is going to help me kind of tighten that in a little bit deeper to see really if they're a B or a C, or maybe they're, if I'm debating between an A or a B, that could help, help me as well. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I really, I, I really like that question too, because then, um, it also gives you permission to keep updating them on the market in a roundabout way. Yep. Okay. So, so, so what we're, we, what we've done really 
so far is we've been able to really understand the prospect's motivation and time frame. We've been able to segment them based upon their time frame. Okay, because that's very important in our business because everybody has a different time frame. Doesn't mean that we're guaranteed to get the business yet, though. Right. right? It just means that we understand what a person in our market's time frame really is. Right. So let's take it one level more. With any of them as an A, B, or C, there's a question that I like to ask, especially from leads, because I don't have a lot of rapport built with them yet. This helps them. It's like in sales, we are always taught to ask for the sale. So how do we do that in real estate? And the easiest question that I have is I would say something along the lines of, hey, Melissa, I know there are thousands of agents in this marketplace that would love to earn your business. What would I personally have to do in order to have that opportunity? That's a good question. Okay. So, hey, Melissa, I, I know, listen, there are dozens. I mean, really, you know, there's hundreds, if not thousands of agents here. Any any real estate agent in our marketplace would love to be able to help you. Okay. Let's just, let's just be, you know, uh, transparent. But what would I have to do? What would someone like myself have to do in order to have the opportunity to earn your business? And then shut up. Yeah, that's the hard part. <laughs> Just shut up. Let that awkward silence. It's like asking for that referral. Shut up. <laughs> but but that's the thing, though. You want them to come back and say, there's no freaking way. My sister is going to kill me. What it does, though, at least it helps you paint a clearer picture of what you're up against. Right. They may say, I don't know. I'm not making any decisions now. It's fine. But now right. they know that I'm asking for their business. They know that I actually want to be able to genuinely help them. Right. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here just to send properties to you and whatever else. But I'm not trying to push you and be forceful as a salesperson as well. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that piece? Um, yeah, so, um, I feel like sometimes the follow-up can get a little bit, like, redundant, you know, like, following up a bunch of times, like, hey, did you see that property? I sent you to see that property, but then they're all on Zillow, right? So, do you find that you bring them value? The way that I have found for me personally to bring them value is through like um, informational videos like on Facebook retargeting and not just generic stuff but stuff that's actually happening happening in the market is that kind of what you found your the industry leverages MLS mm -hmm. or list of properties has a reason why somebody would want to use them. Hey, I want to see this custom MLS link to see these properties. Yeah. Right? That's the old way. I mean, yeah. they need to find the properties, but we're really the expert. So here's how we work. We don't, we're not trying to leverage, hey, we we know of properties and I sent you some properties because that's what every other agent's doing. Yeah. Okay. So this is the next piece. The next piece yeah. is this. Let me get to the right screen. What do we do? Okay, so let's be very clear. If somebody's 30 days or more, a B or a C, right? If they're 30 days or more from starting the process, do we want an appointment with them? Um, so I feel a little bit conflicted on this because, um, you know, I've been kind of been taught, like, just get face to face no matter what. But then you end up with people that aren't ready, that have credit repair issues that, you know, so no, no. probably not. You're correct. I'm not saying never do it. Right. Just understand it's a charity meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It, look at the meeting. It's a complete waste of your time, but you're willing to do it for whatever mm -hmm. reason. In the production level that you're trying to be in, 
it's not going to be bad if they're a B and you meet with them. If they're a C, don't. Right. Main reason why is because a C is 90 days plus. The motivating factor can change a lot in three months mm -hmm. or more. Right. In a B, it's a little tighter. It's only 30 to 90 days out. You don't have maybe a lot of appointments for these next couple of weeks. It's still a good use of your time, but I look at it as it's still a waste of my time, but I'm willing to do it. I'm okay with it. Right. So Bs and Cs, we necessarily, we do not want appointments, especially in high production. We do not want face-to-face -face appointments. They can come into the office maybe, but that's about, I mean, that's about it. Okay. But what about A's? Yes. Okay, so let me ask you a question that's live in your business today. How many people do you have that virtually could see the right property? So that how many people do you have that if they found the right property, if they got pre-approved, if they got the job offer, et cetera, even if they got out of quarantine, <laughs> right. they would be able – or they would want to start the process of buying or selling a home in the next 30 days. If they well, get property for the right price in the right area, get pre-approved, all that stuff is irrelevant. How many people? Um, I had about 12 active buyers lined up for the summer. Some of them were pre-approved. Right? But how far is the summer away? Well, like, well, I guess I should say spring because they were they're they were ready, ready to start looking in the next thirty days. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Of I want you people were actually already looking before this all happened. But okay, so I want you to write those names down right now. Okay, okay. those are A's. Okay. All right, and you can just write down the first name if you want, just to help you remember them as we go through this, uh, or afterwards you can write down the last name, etc. Right. Those are A's, and um, yeah, I'll give you a second to do that. Trying to. Remember name. This is awesome. This is a great problem to have. <laughs> well, everybody's laid off right now in my market. There's going to be a lot of variables <laughs> coming up. Yep. And for those of you guys that are watching this on replay, Start to write down your A's. Who do you know looking to buy or sell or start the process in the next 30 days? If they could get pre-approved, if they found the right house for the right price, etc. And I'd go ahead for any of y'all that are listening is go ahead and do that for your B's especially as well. Maybe even your C's. Okay. Okay. All right. So now that we have those list of A's, if we weren't in quarantine, then what do you think the number one thing you always need to have with every single one of those people? The number one thing you need to have? An appointment? A hundred million thousand gazillion percent. Like I literally beat my clients with a stick. When, when we conversate from this point forward, I'm always going to ask you, how many A's you got? How many appointments you got set? Tell me about the ones that you don't have an appointment set and why that is. So all maybe 12 or whatever you have, 
Right now, it would be more of a virtual appointment set with them, mm -hmm. giving them updates, letting them know that you're still here, you're searching for properties. I mean, again, in this market, right this second, you're going to have to um, listing agent videos. Hey, I, I, you know, I, I know you guys are looking to start the process here um, or have been working through the process. Um, would you consider buying a home virtually? Is that on the table at all or not? You know, um, and then coordinate with the listing agent, coordinate with the seller. The seller's there could do a slow video around. I mean, you have to kind of overcome those objections to kind of keep moving forward. But ultimately, in a, in a normal world where we could, you know, meet face to face, we always, I don't care if the appointment's in two weeks. We mandate having that appointment set. Why do you think that is? What do you think that'll do for your business once you always have an appointment set? Even if you don't know what property is going to show them. Sounds crazy, bro. Um, it will, well, it'll increase your closings, obviously. <laughs> okay, we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, what else? What else will it do? Um, it'll keep, well, it'll keep your momentum going and your pipeline full. Okay, what else will it do? Um, keep you in the habit of setting appointments. And is that how we get paid? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, what, it's just a little tweak, right? This is not like life-changing whatever, but it, it, in, a, in, a, in a system of sorts for how you operate your business, this is huge. I mean, this is like, this is a big example of how Agents sell over 100 homes a year because they're only focused on the metrics that matter. The metric is how many A's do I have? How many appointments do I not have set? What do I need to do to be able to get them to want to have an appointment with me? Do I need to find inventory? Do I need to talk them in to, hey, listen, guys, I just want to let you know you're not going to find this 10,000 square foot house for $100,000? Just doesn't exist out there in today's market. Mm -hmm. Right. You might have to have a talking to them. You might have to meet them at the office. You might have to have a listing presentation. And there's variables that are there depending on each one's hurdle, next hurdle. But ultimately, yeah. there's a pressure on us as salespeople to always keep the ball rolling, like you said. But there's one more thing that it really does and helps, uh, it will help you with. And that is your schedule. It'll help you control your schedule better. Because now it's not like, hey, I just got this email. Hey, Melissa, can we go and see that tonight or tomorrow? Right. right? It's you already had it scheduled. We're trying to figure out which homes we want to go and see before we go and see it on Saturday. If we don't find any more homes, we can always cancel that appointment. But when you're sharing those appointment timeframes, it matches what you and your family and your lifestyle and theirs proactively mm -hmm. and not last minute. Right. This is a key piece of how most of my agents don't have to work at all Right. That makes sense. Okay. Questions or anything about that piece? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, good. So the homework that I really want you to do is to take your all your people. And you might have to go back and really work the motivation and time frame as you're checking you in them. Remember, I'm taking the pressure off of you. You're calling to be a human. Understand mm. the motivation and time frame now that this has happened, or maybe, or whatever. Right? You're just kind of re what we call re-verifying your motivation and time frame. And um, wow. you're putting them into that bucket. And if they're a B or C, you don't want an appointment. So you're just providing value. Right. Or you're asking for the sell, per se. If it's right. a link, you're looking for a value proposition as to why they would want to meet with you. So that meeting could be with a lender for pre-approval. Okay, there's lots of variables that are there. And right now those meetings will just be virtually. Right. So it, be honest, does this help take the pressure off of your prospecting compared to how you were looking at prospecting before and kind of what was required out of you going out and having to prospect to your leads or not. Yeah, no, it, it does because um, I feel like there's, there's been a lot of points 
where I've just been asking for the appointment too soon. And so that makes prospecting a lot more stressful. For sure. It really does. But you're asking people to do something they don't, they're not really ready to do either. Right. And it's not how you want to be treated. So let's not treat our clients that way. It's not your fault though. I mean, to, to me, that's just where our industry has gone. Yeah. You know, it, you've been taught that, yeah. you know, it, and um, it couldn't be more further from the truth, in my opinion. So that's that's one tweak for sure that will uh, help you have more reason and more, you know, thought, thought forward of what they need um, than necessarily what we want. Right. Yeah. Okay. What else do you think some of the homework should be? Based on what we chatted about today. Um, just forming a, a new way of prospecting um, based on kind of this new model of like only wanting appointments with the A's. So now I think that I just need to tweak my phone calls a little bit, kind of what I'm saying or, or asking for. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. And it'll help categorize your database better than warm, cold, and hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Based upon, I talked to them, so they're warm. <laughs> like, yeah. Mean? Like, come on. But when you, when you boil it down like this, doesn't it kind of, it, you're laughing, but it, isn't it kind of like, kind of funny how, how we've been doing things? Yeah, it, it, it is. And, um, and sometimes it can be aggravating too. Like if you're like trying to push for an appointment for somebody that's a year out or just so you can get face to face, you know, sometimes that could be aggravating for them and aggravating for you. For sure. I mean, without a doubt. So I will say for an agent that has done about a dozen transactions a year that prior to this coronavirus stuff, Sounds like you had around ten to twelve or whatever A's in your in your in front of you. Right. Like that is awesome. I was I mean, I was starting to really build, like stack my people from Facebook in a really good way. Like it was it was very it was really working for me. Even like here, brand awareness ads were working for me really well. Um and so it kind of just um came to a, a little bit of a halt with everything that's going on because we have two problems here. We have the virus and we have the price of oil is $20 a barrel. And so um, that's why I guess my, my question was like, should I add in another piece since most of it was primarily focused on Facebook? Should I add in like maybe circle prospecting or, or, mm. or something of that nature? No, no. No, in COD, you'll learn more about um, – because like, let's talk about why. Based upon what you learned today, if you were to start circle prospecting, what is that really doing? Yeah, I guess that's true. Because you don't know if they even want to have any interest in even moving. I mean, 99% yep. of them don't. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's where the Facebook and the retargeting, the dynamic retargeting side is really important because anyone that's clicked on your stuff is some sort of a raised hand and you're, you're still working it. You're still in front of them. Right. What you're going to learn inside of COD is we're going to help you build out a video that is going to be really more of a converting video um, to help you with these leads to give them a reason to see why it's different. Right. I won't go into that today, I've covered a lot, but I, you know, ultimately I would say no. Okay. How many leads do you have coming in a month right now? Um, well, right now um, I'm doing really well on Facebook. The leads are like $1.37 or something. Um, but I have my autoresponder set up and I just get like a million um, thanks, but I'm laid off text messages. <laughs> um, so, it, so I think 
So right now I have about five leads a day coming in um, just because I've backed off of Facebook a whole lot since this all happened. But um, I'm thinking maybe um, getting, you know, ramped back up. I was getting like about 10 leads a day or so. But five leads a day for three days. And that's still a lot of leads, you know, mm -hmm. on a monthly basis for an age. So um, how long have you been working? Um, I started in November. And how many closings have you had from, from Facebook? Or how many pendings and closings combined have you had from Facebook? So I had, um, I just closed my fourth Facebook person yesterday. Okay. So it's been one a month. And then I had one in escrow for April, but it fell out after the virus and everything. So four total in December, January, February. So basically four total in four months. Is that that includes any pendings? Yeah. Okay. Um, and how much ad spend uh, have you been spending for those four months? Um, so it's been about. I did the math, and it averages about a thousand dollars a closing. Okay. Um, Your cost and, of closing. Yeah, and my price point, our average price point here is three hundred thousand. That's the median. So we have a pretty high price point. Okay, so so I won't talk about the ROI side. I'm glad that you knew your cost per closing. So it's about a thousand bucks. Okay, mm -hmm. but you're only 120 days in. Right. The cost per closing really starts to come down about 90 days from the start of any new lead generator. Right. Okay, this kind of threw a wrench in it for you. The whole quarantine stuff. Yeah. Um, but what I would also suggest is that. When we talked about the bees, I mean, had you been tracking anybody as 30 to 90 days from starting the process in, in the past? Do you have a list of those right now? No. Okay. I can't stress this enough. I, I don't even care. I mean, I do care because you had 12 A's. But I don't even really care about the A's as much with a new client as I care about the bees. That is that bench. That is that consistency. That is, that is, if we have zero A's today, I'm focused on putting B's on the board. Sounds crazy. Okay. What you've been able to do is to get one closing per $1,000 out of finding an A in the lead immediately, in the leads immediately. That's the 1% conversion. One to two percent conversion per the marketplace. That's what everybody else is looking for. I want to really challenge you that when you're qualifying these people, really look at those bees because that'll one increase. That's how we get that six to eight percent conversion. This is it's the bees. Right. You, you want consistency in the three pendings a month. It's the bees because not all of them, but they will a percentage of them will cycle down into your A's while you're getting new leads looking for A's as well. Right. Does that paint a picture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Because right now you're just taking the very one to 2% off the top. And that's what every agent does. So you're not doing anything wrong. I'm just saying, but that's not where the money is. The money is in those 30 to 90 day people. I really don't even care about the 90 day plus people. I mean, I do follow up. We teach that, but the B's is that's, that's, that's the gold mine right there. Right. So really work on those bees. I, I'll share one more thing with you really quick. So your budget and your goal right now is 36. Is that correct? Yes. So in COD, when we talk about performance management here, I know you haven't been through this just yet uh, internally, but can you read number three? Is the number of your bees greater than twenty five percent of your twelve month goal? Minimum ten. Minimum ten. Okay. So twenty five percent of thirty six is less than ten. So our goal of always maintaining always maintaining a minimum number of 10 Bs as a production goal of 36. Okay. 
So go ahead. I said that makes sense. So that metric, I mean, I, I mean, I'm like, I, I, I do agents all the time. I new to us, I should say, like, I can't stress enough how important that particular piece is. Like, I don't even care if you have zero business a day, zero leads or anything. But I care that at least in 90 days, or per se, 30 to 90 days, we're starting to get the momentum of pendings. And right. to be able to do that, because if not, what we're doing is we're going out there every day and looking for fresh meat. Um, in COD, you'll hear me tell a story about the farmer versus the nomad. And the nomad's going out every day to kill his dinner, you know, all that kind of stuff. Whereas a farmer, he's planting something. He's going to be kind of starving for a little bit, but eventually that crop's going to be there. Right. And it's going to all, and as long as he's planting, 90 days, he's going to be able to harvest. Tomorrow he plants, 90 days, he's going to be able to harvest. The next, you see what I'm saying? And right. that's kind of that mental picture that I've always used with putting names on the board. So when you're prospecting with your um, your Facebook leads, Absolutely okay that you're putting B's and C's on the board because that's that's good. Just don't just look for the A's as well. Right. So if you don't have 10 B's after you start calling these people and qualifying them and, and segmenting them, then this is when I tell my clients that you need to work overtime. That means your your shit's broken. You see what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. how serious it is. Right. We don't snap. Like that. So, are we getting leads? And the answer is no. Then, then of course, now we know why we're not. The problem is, or maybe the problem is, we're not calling them to put any names on the board. Um, maybe it's because for you, in this case, you weren't segmenting in the right way. We're just taking the criminal, the criminal the top. Yeah. Right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right? exactly what I was doing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Questions? You got anything else? No, I don't think so. Um, I need to get working on my bees. Or finding them. You already have. Yeah. You got all those freaking leads. Yeah, I do. You you have them already. I mean, you have a bigger business. Honestly, I mean, you'll you'll fast forward ninety days and see. But I, I think, especially once this quarantine stuff uh, unravels, but you. You have way more than what most people come into COD already have because of the less than six months number of leads that you already have in front of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're going to do way better than 36, I would agree. But um, how many organic deals did you do last year from Sphere of Influence, past clients and referrals? Um, so I started in real estate. I started in um, October oh, and then right. so I started in October and then I did two two sphere of influence. And then right after that was my first Facebook um, closing. So do you think probably if you did two in, let's say, a quarter. So maybe this year you'll do about five or six. Yeah, probably. And then I already, I am working two referrals right now. So referrals count in sphere of influence. So what we like to do is use that data from last year and then kind of forecast what sphere of influence is going to contribute to you this year. And you'll, you'll, you'll go through that exercise out of COD. Um, but the, I don't, yeah. I, I won't go down the path yet because I don't I don't think that's a true metric because I think your thousand dollar closings uh, uh, cost per closing is going to go down way down in the next let's say ninety days once you get past the quarantine hurdle and now that we're segmenting your database with the bees let's let's just do that for now and then once we start having those numbers and we get that cost per closing down to kind of a a normal number of about four to five hundred dollars right. then we'll know what your ad spend needs to be right. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll know that it needs to be seven fifty a month for thirty six transactions, because between that and your sphere, it's that's the it's the math. It's working itself out. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. All right. Well, hey, thanks for hanging in there with me. Any yeah. other things? Like that? 
I don't think so. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. And guys, from the guys that are watching, uh, even on uh, live, I know, hey, Donnie there, how are you? He's saying date before you get married. So I think he's talking about the leads um, as well. But uh, thanks for joining us live. And if you guys have any questions uh, about this or for Melissa, just tag her there in the comments in the Facebook group. And uh, we'll definitely uh, reply back to you guys. But hey, bye for now, guys. We'll see you.